Let's do these two volume problem using the this method. So this this method is type one. We are going to use horizontal revolution axis, and the integral is going to be a dx integral. What is horizontal revolution axis? So if you take a look at these two graphs on the graph on the left, do you see that there is a pink, like a pink arrow? So that means you are going to rotate the entire area above the about the x-axis. Uh, on the second problem on the right, you are going to rotate the entire area about the x-axis. So the x-axis is a horizontal axis. So that means the whole that is a horizontal revolution axis. So the x-axis is horizontal, and then we rotate the entire area about it. So that's why we call this horizontal revolution axis. So let's start at the first problem. I gave you multiple functions. Y equals to x plus one. Y equals to zero. X equals to zero, and x equals to two. So when you do this type of problem, usually the graph is not provided, especially you are asked to do this on an in-class uh, written test. The graph is usually not provided. So y equals to x plus one, you have a straight line, right? But usually the graph is easy to sketch, usually, most of the time. And then y equals to zero, x equals to zero, you will be seeing this all the time in a volume problem. So I want you to take a look at the box. The x-axis is actually y equals to zero. The y-axis is actually x equals to zero. You must keep these two things in your mind. And then x equals to 2 is a vertical line. So if you look at the graph, do you see that there is an area bounded by these curves? All right. So and then I said rotate about the x axis. So rotate about the x axis. So on the x axis, on the right hand side of the x axis, do you see that there is an arrow? There is a pink or red arrow. Do you see that I draw a rotation symbol? So that is what do I mean by rotate about the x axis? If you're wondering, hey, uh, when I read the book, when I read my textbook, there is a 3D picture. Where is your 3D picture? So here is my explanation. Those 3D picture is not easy to draw. As long as you understand the process, you don't need a 3D picture in order to get the question completely right. So let me show you how to get it without getting without drawing the 3D picture because uh, drawing a 3D picture is hard to draw, especially when I say something and when I have to say, explain and draw at the same time. So first of all, you have an area, right? So what is the concept of this volume problem? The concept of this volume problem is you figure out the area first, right? So you figure out the area of this region and then you spin the area, the two dimensional area, 360 degree. After the spinning is done, you will get a 3D object. So that is the concept of a volume problem. So first of all, when you look for an area, what do you need, need, need to do? Still remember the area between curves. So you have to use the top curve minus the bottom curve, right? So top curve minus bottom curve. Which one is the top? Which one is the bottom? To answer that question, I will just do this. So this one, uh, you can you can either draw a rectangle or you draw a line. Uh, when I was a student, I just draw a line. So we have a point from here to here, right? Do you see that um, the top of the rectangle or the top of the line is touching the y equals to x plus 1 and then the bottom of the line is touching y equals to 0. If you want to draw a rectangle, just use the midpoint rule. So you take the point as a midpoint and then you draw a rectangle. So that's how you get your rectangle. And then based on this rectangle, I can see the top curve is y equals to x plus 1 and then the bottom curve is y equals to zero, all right? And then what else do I need? I need um, a lower limit and an upper limit. So the lower cut is x equals to zero. So this is from x equals to zero to x equals to two. And then what is the radius? What do I mean by the radius? So the radius, so in this type of problem, so since, um, the area is the top curve minus bottom curve, then you would just write top minus bottom, which is equals to x plus one. All right, so just put this in parentheses, minus the bottom curve is y is zero, right? Don't write nothing, write the zero out. So this is actually y equals to x plus one minus 
y equals to zero, to be more specific. And then the volume is pi r squared in, in an integral, right? So the volume is equals to, so you do this from um, x equals to zero to x equals to two, you have a pi radius square dx. If you look at the integrand, every variable is in x, right? So you have from zero to two, and then you have a pi, and then you have the radius. The radius is the top curve minus the bottom curve, and then dx, and then you bring the radius down in the square bracket, x plus one minus zero. So when I do this type of problem uh, in my class, I just do set up but do not evaluate because that's, that's what I ask my student to do. The purpose of this lesson is to set up an integral to find the volume. It's not integrate. So if you want to practice integrate, you should go, go to the previous lesson. I already discussed the U substitution and the simple power rule. So those lessons, they are specifically designed for doing integration and the fundamental theorem of calculus. This one, we want to focus on the volume. So I want, just want to start right here. So this is the integral that you will have to set up. Now, if you read a book, the book will usually just omit the zero, right? But I don't recommend that. I recommend you to write everything out because like, let's say three days later, when you go back to your notes, so you know where the zero is came from. Right, so that's my standard. I want you to show everything. And you do not need to simplify the integral. Please don't. Uh, this is highly recommended because three days later, when I go back to my notes again, I know exactly what I did three days ago. All right, so that is the end of the first problem. Let's move on to the next one. So the next one, we have a different function, a y equals to square root of x minus one. So that is a square root function. The minus one means you shift the point from zero, zero to one, zero, just one unit to the right hand side. And then y equals to zero is on the x axis. Do you see the white line? y equals to zero and x equals to five. Okay, so this one, the revolution axis is x axis. x axis is horizontal. How, why is that horizontal? Because I can see it, x axis is a horizontal line, right? So since the revolution axis is horizontal, then that must be a dx problem. Right, so let me switch color for that, switch to blue. And then what is the top curve? The top curve is right here, right? So this is the top curve. This is the bottom curve. I don't think that you will need to draw a rectangle unless you are asked to do so on a test. Let's do it anyway. I, I, to, in my opinion, a line is enough. So you use the midpoint rule method to draw your uh, rectangle. And then the top of the rectangle is touching the square root y equals to square root of x minus 1. And then the bottom of the line or the rectangle is touching y equals to 0. Do you see that they are both y equal? Did that, it, it, it must be in, in, in this way. And then the integral goes from x equals to 1 to x equals to 5. Everything must be in x. x equals to 1 to x equals to five. And then you, um, what else do you have to do? You have to do the radius. So this is top minus bottom. That is equals to the square root of x minus one minus zero. Don't skip the zero, all right? So this is y equals to square root of x minus one minus y equals to zero. So when you do the volume, so you have volume that is equals to from 1 to 5, and then you have a pi r square. And then dx, so the radius, you got you got it in there. Don't jump straight to the integral. Write everything down first, so you prepare, just like making a cake, you prepare all the ingredients in front of you, and then you bring everything together. If you jump straight to the integral, most likely you will make a mistake. Oh. By, by the way, when you sketch your own graph, make sure your graph is nice and big and you label everything correctly. Okay. 1 to 5, x equals to 1, x equals to 5, pi, and then I usually prepare a square bracket, square that, and then dx. So that's inside the square bracket, I have square root x minus 1 and then minus a 0. I keep everything in there. Do not simplify your stuff. 
and then to integrate the square get rid of the square root right and then the pi is just a constant so you are basically integrating x minus 1 which is easy so that is the setup of this problem so when you after you evaluate this integral using the fundamental theorem of calculus the answer is the volume of the 3d object so this one if you spin this area do you see that there is a two-dimensional area under the curve if you spin that 360 degree you get a 3d object all right so but that is not the end yet at this point you might ask me hey uh, what if the revolution axis is something else? So let me bring you to the next page. So this one is the first problem, right? And then this one, I spin the area about the x-axis. Now, here is a what if. What if we spin that about something else? So let's say we spin that about right here. How about um, x equals to 7? What is the area going? What what is the integral going to look like? What if I stand right below here? Let's say uh, x equals to uh, negative ten. Can I rotate about x equals to seven? Oh, sorry. Y equals to seven. Y equals to negative ten. Can I do that? The answer is yes. But that method has another name that is called the Washer's method. when this area this area under the curve and the revolution axis is not right next to each other do you see that this x-axis right here is touching the area right and then that y equals to 7 and the y equals to negative 10 they are not touching on right next to the area so in that case we will be using a washer's method which is based on the, this method with a minor modification and we will discuss that in the next or the next couple videos all right so that is the end of this video if you think my instruction is helpful let me know in the comment below like the video share the video for me subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so i truly appreciate your help and support i will see you all in the next video signing out for now